Up next for us, uh, we have Saran Kaba Jones from Face Africa. Thank you. Hi. Good to see, see you. you. So let's start it as we did uh, with Jean Louis, and, and I'm I'm very interested from your perspective. Yeah, yeah. What is it uh, when when you look at leadership in the SDGs? What does that mean? I think. Um, for a while, when we talk about leadership or think about leadership, it's usually from a top-down level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am um, a huge advocate of um, sort of empowering local actors, mm -hmm. local groups, um, and making sure that we're putting the power in their hands and giving them the leadership role to take matters into their own hands and solve their own problems in their, in their communities. How do you localize it? We're starting with the leadership now. How do you localize it? Can I get up? So I'll, I'll start with a quote by, by my, my own president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Cookies who away. said yesterday, the best way to solve a problem is to put the problem in the hands of the people. So um, we talk about these global goals, and they're extremely high level. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you, like you said, how do you take it and bring it to the people? I'll use the, the Ebola crisis, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, Liberia and, and parts of West Africa was hit with, with, a, with a crisis um, in 2014. And we started to see the, the crisis subside when people and communities and local actors and community groups themselves started to take matters into their, their own hands. While there, was, there were a lot of support and funding coming in from the international community, but it wasn't until the local communities themselves started to take actions that we truly started to see the tide turning. So I think it's important when we think about global crisis, um, making sure that together, it's okay? in the hands yes. of the people. Um, that's the only way we can really tackle the issue. At the What's the language that you use to describe the SDGs uh, to, on this local level? How do you express the idea of these 17 goals here? I mean, um, Locally, people live, live these problems right. daily. Every single day they deal with um, hunger issues and right. water crisis and poverty like you've never seen before. So it's something that they live on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, how do you communicate cater it to them, how do you get it down to their level? You include them in the process. Mm -hmm. You make sure that it's, a, we talked about collaboration a lot today, but you make sure that they're truly involved and engaged in solving the problems themselves. And that means actually bringing them to the table and making yeah. sure that they're coming up with solutions that fit within their local context. So it's not high level solutions that uh -huh. com that's coming from New York or from the UN or mm -hmm. um, from the EU, right. but how do you make sure that they have these solutions and they can also contribute to solving some of these problems? Do you bring in the cubes? The you bring no, in the cube? you this absolutely a, don't. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what those are. I, I just thought it might be interesting because they're, they're so cleanly um, expressed. Uh, give me an example, mm -hmm. a, a good example where you've seen transformation. Um, I'll talk about my own work. I yeah. mean, we're focused on goal six, clean water and sanitation for mm -hmm. all in Liberia. We've been working in Liberia over the last seven years. Um, and truly, we, we see firsthand the importance of collaboration. We talked about scale. Right. Liberia is a country of four million people, yet there are over 150 organizations wor working on goal six, on water. Mm -hmm. 160 organizations working on water. We can't talk about scale when everyone's working in silos. So how do you bring these groups together and say, we have this problem that's, that has persisted for decades. How can we come together and solve it? And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to set an example and show the government, show the international community, mm -hmm. and all, the, all of the various actors and players and say, if we come together, if we have a strategy, mm -hmm. if we pull our resources, our expertise, our skills together, we can solve a water, this water crisis in a country of four million people, and that's what we've been doing. We've already accomplished this goal in two counties already in Liberia out of 15, and we want to use this as sort of an example wow. in the benchmark to say yeah. if we can do this as a small group of two full-time staff and five part-time and over five years we're able to solve this, this problem in two counties, hey. we can certainly um, um, solve it for the entire country. That's not me actually talking, by the way. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot talk with the, well, move my mouth Thank you very time. much. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> how ha that's, that's still not me. Uh, how do you... When you think of this process that you've changed uh, in your own organization, again, focusing on water here, what was the, cr the, the crucial 
moment that you were able to achieve that transformation based on the SDGs? What was it that, that had to happen? I think we started to see, when we started working on, on water in Liberia, we realized that there were so many different players and actors um, in this field, but yeah. yet we weren't seeing any impact. Mm -hmm. right. Why should a country of four million people that has billions of dollars in aid funding poured in every single um, year yeah. still have a water crisis or a hunger crisis or a healthcare crisis or education crisis? So we need to really um, you know, come together and strategize yeah. and talk about the issue and come up with concrete solutions on how we can solve this problem. And we were able to take the lead on that, bringing various stakeholders together, including Oxfam and Tier Fund and all the big international players in water in Liberia, as well as the government, as well as other local NGOs as well. And that's how we were able um, to come up with this with this solution. So, Saran, now that you're an experienced uh, member and supporter and leader in the Global Compact, how would you communicate what, what the blueprint is and what the Global Compact is trying to do to someone who does not know about this? I mean, I would say, you know, there's good work happening all over the world. Um, there's, there are real legitimate um, sort of concerns and, and passion and commitment. Um, and you're starting to see that, you know, here in this room we're seeing that. But I think, like you said, it's important to sort of be able to translate that at the local level so people can really um, feel like they're a part of the solution as opposed to just outsiders coming in and telling them how to, what to do and how to solve their problems. As I asked Jean-Louis, uh, how is this discussed uh, in your organization to key stakeholders, both when you're reaching up and as well when you're reaching out to, to the team? So the board and then the team. How do you discuss this idea of the SDGs 2030, the 5,000 days we've got in front of us? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we've been talking about it since the Millennium Development Goals, and now with the SDGs, I think um, it's just a matter of taking, taking it a step further, building on what we've done already, um, and, and you know, Good. sharing lessons learned as well. Do they ever go, others. why are we doing this though? No, because you see the impact. Uh -huh. I think if there's a genuine com level of commitment, right, right. Um, you see the impact. And we, you know, we, we show the work, we show the impact, and there are deliverables, and we meet them, and we share that with our board and our team members. They get excited, and they want to do even more. And we, um, the, the, the board wants to support our efforts even more. So they're fully on board. The Absolutely. Board. <laughs> uh, what inspires you now that you have been part of the, the compact? What mm -hmm. inspires you? To, to do this? My generation, I think um, there's so many, you know, young people um, globally who are doing amazing work, so many young social entrepreneurs who are coming up with innovative solutions to solving some of these global crises, and I see and work with them every day and collaborate with them and partner with them, and they inspire me to, to want to keep going, and I just want to see a better world than the one that I'm in currently. That's a great way to end our conversation. Thank you so much, uh, ladies you. and gentlemen. Uh, Saran Kaba-Jones from Face Africa. Thank you All so right. much. Thanks, Rich.